Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to cover vectors to matrices, so we're going to do a little bit of matrix here inside of R, nothing fancy, but as we kick off this video here, let's open a new program, and we'll make a note here. So if we remember here in, you know, episode 7, uh, we did vector operations. So let's just do a quick reminder here, and as a reminder, uh, we'll do uh, inches to centimeters. Uh, and we'll remember here also that uh, one inch is going to be equal to uh, 2.54 centimeters. So let's create some numbers here quickly. So we'll create uh, the numbers 1 to 10. Uh, and to do this, we'll just say, you know, X is going to be assigned uh, 1 to 10. We'll run that. And then next we're going to create, you know, the function to convert inches to centimeters uh, by multiplying uh, by 2.54. Okay. Uh, and to do this, right, we'll just call this um, inch to centimeter and we'll just assign this the function which is going to take the value of x. Well, I'll say it takes the value of a, so we don't get the x's confused here. Uh, and we want it to return uh, the value of a times 2.54. So again, this is a simple function. Uh, it's going to take one value, and it's just going to return this quick calculation. So there's no need to do curly brackets and do all that to make a more complex function here. And we're going to run that. You can see it exists here on the top right. And now we're just going to do, okay, inches to centimeters, which is going to be our function name. And we're going to throw in X in here and run that. Okay, and you can see here, right, 1 times 2.54 is 2.54. Uh, 2 times 2.54 is 5.08. And then 3, 4, all the way through 10. So 10 is an easy one to check, right? 2.54 times 10 is going to be 25.4. So that's working here. Um, but now we're going to cover, you know, let's take a vector and we're going to output a matrix, okay? Um, we'll create the function so that it returns two values. Um, the reason for doing this is, let's say you have this table here and it outputs 2.54, 5.08, and so on. And you're like, I, I don't know what those conversions are. Maybe your numbers aren't from 1 to 10. Maybe there's a random assortment of numbers. A lot of times you're going to want to see both your inches and your centimeters side by side. So we would like two actual vectors or two columns here. Um, so I'll put a note here. Uh, we might want to see the input and the output uh, side by side. Okay, and so to do this, we're just going to call this function inches to centimeters both. So we want both of these. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing as above. So we're going to do a function of A here. And this is going to return. Um, so we want to return a vector. So we're going to do C. And we're going to return A. So what we end up putting into here, and we also want to return... Uh, a times 2.54. So just like before, let's give us some spacing here so it's easier to read. And then we'll run that. And next we're going to plug in, okay, inches to centimeters, uh, both, and we're going to plug in five. Okay, so as you see here, right, it outputs uh, five and 12.7. So if we look up in our one, two, three, four, five kind of thing, one, two, three, four, five, you'll see here that five is also 12.7. But again, it's nice to see them side by side, right? Then you're not counting through rows, or again, if it's random numbers, you can see them easily without trying to convert or look up or have to get a calculator. So, you know, this is great. So this is exactly what we wanted. So now let's say though, instead of putting a number in, we want an entire vector. Uh, we're just gonna use, so we'll use X from above, okay? We're gonna take this X and we're gonna plug it inside of our function here. So inches to centimeters, both, and we're gonna plug in X. And now you see down here, we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has all of your X's first, 
in this one vector here. And then the one vector continues and has the values next to it. Okay, so as you can see here with the vector, right, it goes 1 to 10, 2.5 to 25.4, but it's one long vector, right? So this is going to be an issue here, right? So what we're going to say is what we really want is we really want uh, to see these side by side, right? I don't want one long vector with all these numbers and then trying to figure out where to split them. It'd be a lot easier if it was perhaps in two columns. Um, so to do this, right, we need a matrix. And we're going to call this matrix, you know, easy read. So it's going to be an easy to read matrix here. Um, and to do this, we're going to do easy read is going to be equal to matrix. And this is a function inside of R. And then we're going to do the parentheses here and do n centimeter both. So that's what we're going to want. And we're going to plug x into that. And then I'm going to put a comma here and we're going to put in call for the number of columns that we want. So we already know it's going to be two, right? The function outputs two specific outputs. So I'm going to want two columns here. And then we're going to hit enter. And you can print this, which is one way to do this. So print, easy read. Uh, and you can see here, right, you have your first column, which it gives you with the one, and it goes one to 10. Uh, the second column, which does 2.5 all the way down to 25.4. Another easy way to do this is double click up here. And you can see here, right, this is exactly what we're looking for. This is a nice, you know, pretty table and everything. It's all in one place. It looks great. It's amazing. Okay, so... I hope you guys get the takeaway here, right? The conclusion um, of this video, you know, is that matrices or matrix, matrix, uh, they make your life a lot easier. And the reason for this, you know, is going to be, let's just say here. So one, uh, it's easy to read as a human. But realistically, the reason that we really care about this is two, um, it's easier to pull objects later on. So what I mean by this is that later on, if you have all these columns inside of a matrix, you know, you can go in and say, hey, I need this column or that column, and you can make adjustments to them. If it's one long vector, then you have to figure out like, okay, what am I going to do? And how do I split it? And you know, how many objects are in there? And what are the numbers in the industry in the indices, right? It just takes a lot of time. Um, so really the takeaway here is that matrices are great. And in this video, right, you can put in one vector here, you can do a calculation and you can output multiple vectors. And then we can just combine them into one essentially matrix for easier manipulation, both for reading and for calculations. Um, but let's just do a fun example here. Let's calculate out our age, but let's do it for a few things here. So let's do your animal age uh, and your Jupiter age. Okay, so animal age, like, you know, people say cat years, which is going to be, so I'll put a little note here, cat years or dog years, which is going to be seven years. Um, and then also here for Jupiter, right, uh, Jupiter rotates differently than the earth does so the number of rotations it takes to go all the way around the sun right that rings a lot bigger um to go around jupiter so once around the sun that's actually going to be 11.8618 years okay so basically when you're on earth right you're gonna have to go around 11.8618 times just to be able to do the same as one full rotation for Jupiter here. So we'll call these Jupiter years. Um, to do this though, we're just gonna do the same thing we've done before. So we'll do age calc, that's what we're gonna call it. Um, we're gonna do a function again here. We're gonna take in age, which is just gonna be our human age. And then we're going to return, um, again, a vector here, which is going to be age age times seven. So this will give you your animal years, cat years, dog years. And then we're going to do age divided by 11.8618, which will be your Jupiter age. So what I mean by this is that, you know, if you're basically on earth, right, to be one Jupiter year old, you're gonna have to be on earth and go around, you know, 11.86 years on earth. So we're gonna divide that to get your Jupiter age. Uh, we'll run that. All right, so let's just create some fun ages here for the model. 
Um, we're just gonna assign to this, you know, a vector, and we're gonna do one, five, you know, first birthday, fifth birthday, 12th birthday is pretty exciting, 16, right? You get to drive a car here in America. Uh, 18, you're an adult here in the US. Uh, 21, you can drink, for example. 65, we'll say, I don't know, it's retirement. And if you hit 100, right, that's a huge deal. So we'll create these as fun ages. We'll run those real quick. Again, let's give us a few more lines. And then we're gonna save the ages, which is gonna be what we want. So we're gonna save all this you know, calculation here so we can see them and look at the tables. Uh, and again, we're gonna do matrix and we're gonna do age calc. So age calc is gonna be our function here and then we're gonna plug in fun ages into this function. And then number of columns here. So this is the bigger example, right? I want my original age, so my earth age, I want my animal age, and I want my Jupiter age. So we're gonna need three columns here. So number of columns is equal to three instead of two. You run that, uh, and then we'll just print this out here. So print, save age. And again, you can see this table. Um, I'm just gonna use this up here. Again, if you have massive data sets, opening these can be cumbersome, uh, but we're just gonna do it here because it's easy to see. So our earth age is gonna be one, five, 12, 16, 18, 21, 65, and 100, which is awesome. Um, you can note here, right, animal ages is seven, 35, Again, if you were 100 years old, you'd be 700 years in like cat years or dog years. Uh, but the crazy thing with Jupiter, right, uh, is if you made it to 100 years on Earth, you would only be doing essentially 8.43 rotations around the sun on Jupiter. So that's pretty crazy here, right? Life expectancy on Jupiter and Jupiter years would be really small. So we'll just put a fun note here, right? So Jupiter years, are crazy long, right? 11 years is a long, long, long time. Um, again, this is just a fun video here to show you how you can put in vectors and you can get out matrices. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.